Hello students, today we will revise the variety in cells on the basis of number, shapes and size. Before starting this, we will recapitulate the things that we have learnt in our previous video. We have learnt that the word cell, it is a Latin word which means small rooms. And in 1665, Robert Hooke used a microscope to examine a thin slice of cork and he examined hexagonal shaped structure and he called each structure or each compartment as a cell. Robert Hooke is also known as father, father of cytology. Study of a cell is called the cytology. He discovered the dead cells. And Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek discovered the cell in living organism in 1675 and he is known as the father of microbiology. Study of the microorganism is called the microbiology. Today we will discuss the variety in cells, unicellular and multicellular organism. Living organism are made up of one or many cells. Organism made up of a single cell. The organism that are made up of a single cell, they are called the unicellular organism. Example are amoeba, paramecium, euglena, bacteria and yeast. These are the unicellular example. Unicellular organisms, they have only one cell. All the basic function of a living uh, being like respiration, excretion, reproduction, etc. are performed by one cell. All the activities are performed by one cell. Organism made up of many cells are called the multi-cell. Multi means many. So, the organisms that are made up of many cells are called multicellular organisms. Most of the plants and animals that we see around us are multicellular organisms. Example of multicellular organisms are trees, grass, insects, cow, birds, human. A few examples of multicellular organism. All multicellular organism including human beings show division of labor. Remember they show division of labor. It means that different parts of a multicellular organism perform different function. For example, human if we take the example of human body, we have stomach. To digest food. Division of labor. Uh, stomach. Hard to pump the blood. Stomach. To digest. Food. Heart. To pump. Blood. Skeleton and muscular system. Perform movement and so on. There are different kinds of organs that perform different function. Now, level of organization from cell to organism. So, how cell organism? We have just learned that all the multicellular organisms show division of labor. They show division of labor. In multicellular organisms, cell represent the lowest level of organization. Cell is the lowest level of organization. Lowest level of organization. A group of similar cells. A group of similar cells perform a specific function. Join together to form a tissue. From cell they form a tissue. How can we define the tissue? Similar cells join together to form a tissue. From tissue... If we take the example, uh, if we take the example of tissue, for example, skin. All skin lining are formed of special type of tissues. For example, epithelial tissue. We learned about uh, different kinds of tissues in your next class. 
epithelial tissue different tissue joined together to form an organ different tissues joined together to form an organ and for example example of organ is stomach liver pancreas etc every organ perform a specific function for example stomach help in digestion of food pancreas secrete digestive juices uh, etc in plants also we see that they have different organs like roots they have absor help in absorption of water and minerals leaves perform the uh, photosynthesis stem help in the transportation of the water mineral and food prepared by the leaves and from organ organ form the organ system many organs that work together to form a specific life function form an organ system and from organ system organism will be formed the various organ system makes up a living organism the various organ system makes up the living organisms now on the basis of shape and size different organism have cell of different kinds the shape and size of the cell are also related to specific function performed by organism and now cell shape cell show a great variety in their shape such as spherical means they are just like a sphere example are eggs of many animals they are generally spherical spindle shaped spindle shaped uh, are the example of uh, spindle shaped cell are smooth muscle cells smooth muscle fibers elongated these are elongated or branched these are nerve cells oval shaped they are rbc red blood cells and there are so many types of cells present in our body on the basis of shape and size some cells may not have definite shape some cells may not have definite shape that is they have changing their shape for example you have learned about the amoeba it is a unicellular organism and it has an irregular shape and along with amoeba wbc or white blood cells they are also irregular in shape they do not have a specific shape cell size on the basis of cell uh, uh, cell size the cell and their organelles are measured by fraction of millimeters millimeters 1000th of a millimeter is called a micron or micrometer 1000th of or you can also say that 1 micron or micrometer it is also called micro meter is equal to 10 to the power minus 3 milli meter most of the cell are microscopic in size we know that cell is generally microscopic and are not visible to the naked eye they need to be enlarged or magnified by a microscope the size of the cell varies from very small cells to bacteria or to the very large cell example of the uh, largest uh, cell is egg of the ostrich in a, uh, in our body rbcs is the smallest and nerve cell are the longest cell remember nerve cells are the longest cell in our body the algae acetabularia it is a unicellular organism consist of a single cell having a length of 10 mm aceta bleria it is a 
algae now we will discuss the parts of the cell it cell differ from their shape and sizes all cells however show some similarities in their structure a typical cell consists of three parts it is cell membrane cytoplasm and nucleus first of all we will discuss the cell membrane every cell is bound by a thin delicate membrane called the cell membrane or it is also called the plasma membrane the cell membrane separates cell from one another and also the cell from the surrounding medium now what are the function of the cell membrane or plasma membrane it is a porous membrane means it contains small pores and it allow the entry and exit of only selected substances it also prevent the movement of some other substances across it thus it is also called selectively permeable membrane it provides an outer boundary to the cell and protect the cell from injury the second typical structure of the cell is cyto plasm cytoplasm is a thick jelly like substance or fluid in the cell membrane thick jelly like fluid inside the cell membrane it occupies the space between the it, it occupies the space between the cell membrane and the nucleus the fluid present inside the cell membrane and nucleus it is called the cytoplasm these are there are many small cytoplasmic bodies these are cell organelles they are also present inside the cytoplasm that we will discuss in later later on nucleus the third important structure of a cell is nucleus it is the most important component of the living cell and it is generally spherical and located at the center of this cell this is nucleus the nucleus consists of the following parts first nuclear membrane nucleoplasm nucleolus and fourth one is chromosomes first of all we will discuss the nuclear membrane nucleus is separated from cytoplasm by a membrane called the nuclear membrane you can see it here this is the nuclear membrane this membrane is also porous just like a plasma membrane and it also allows the entry and exit of certain selected material between the cytoplasm and inside the nucleus the second th is, is nucleoplasm it is a dense fluid in the nucleus the dense fluid present inside the nucleus is called the nucleoplasm remember cytoplasm plus nucleoplasm they are collectively called proto plasm and third one is nucleolus it is a small spherical body present inside the nucleus small spherical body present inside the nucleus is called nucleolus and it is rich in rna it is rich in rna rna is ribonucleic acid and the fourth one is chromosome the chromatin material is the thin like structure which is present uh, the thread like structure and it is composed of dna and this contain genes genes are responsible for passing genetic characters from parents to the offspring for example uh, if a person has brown eyes 
His son or daughter may also have brown eyes. If a woman has curly hair, her son or daughter may also have curly hair. However, the different combination of genes from the parents result in different characteristics. So, in our next video, we will discuss the prokaryote, eukaryotes, and comparison of plant and animal cells. Thank you.